group of lovable puppets consisting of animals, creatures and even aliens. What's not to love, right? The Muppets weren't always this massive success and cultural phenomenon that they are today. Even before they had their own show, they originally appeared on a smaller television show that aired on WRC-TV from 1955 to 1961. In Jim Henson's first ever television series, Sam and Friends, where a humanoid character called Sam, along with a host of, you guessed it, his friends, would entertain audiences in five minute episodes where they would lip sync to popular songs and comedy routines of the time. Now, don't get me wrong, these characters were nowhere near the Muppets that we know and love today. However, you can definitely see some similarities between the cast of Sam and Friends and the Muppets that we have today. Take, for example, the character Omar the Chef. Now, in Sam and Friends, Omar the Chef is a clumsy chef and he's even seen, in one point, having a salad that he's prepared set alight in front of him because of how clumsy he is. Now, obviously, this is very, very similar to a well-known Muppet, the Swedish Chef. But most notably would be Kermit. Now, in Sam and Friends, there is a character called Kermit. And he looks very much like our Kermit today. The only difference is his body isn't as moulded, which I will get onto in future episodes where I'm going to delve into the characters a bit more. He wasn't as green because it was black and white back then, so that didn't really matter. But the most key difference, he wasn't a frog. At this time in his life, Kermit was having an identity crisis. And he wasn't a frog, he wasn't a human, he was just Kermit. After the success of Sam and Friends, the cast began to appear on various daytime TV shows, most often The Today Show. Now, despite the fact that most of their appearances happened via satellite, the audience loved them so much that in the first six months, they had already made 24 appearances. Fast forward to 1969, and what Henson has now started calling The Muppets have started to appear on a show called Sesame Street. Now, Sesame Street was a very well-known kids show at the time, and this was really helping to boost the Muppets into a nationwide popularity. But there was one problem that Henson had with this, and this was that it was painting the Muppets as something for kids, whereas he wanted it to be seen as something for everyone, including adults. And what was his solution to this? Enter The Muppet Show. Now, everyone has heard of The Muppet Show, but younger viewers may not know what it was actually about. Now, the Muppet Show ran from 1976 to 1981, and each episode was about 25 to 30 minutes long, or quite a standard length for an episode, and it featured all of your favourite Muppets. Kermit, Fozzie, Gonzo, Miss Piggy, Swedish Chef, all of your favourite Muppets. Each episode would consist of Kermit, who was the host and producer of the show, having to deal with the antics and chaos being caused by the cast of The Muppet Show. This would then be spliced with various this would then be spliced with various performances, musical numbers and comedy routines performed throughout the show. Something else that really helped boost The Muppet Show into popularity was its use of celebrity guests in every show. These ranged from John Cleese to Julie Andrews, Elton John, even Gene Kelly were used in this show as special guests and would interact with The Muppets. If anyone was wanting to watch the original episodes of The Muppet Show, Luckily, it's not that hard to find. They are all available on Disney+. Plus. But we'll get to that in a bit. The Muppet Show was so successful that it even spawned spin-off movies, original full-length motion pictures, such as The Muppet Movie, which came out in 1979, Muppet Caper in 1981, and Muppets Take Manhattan in 1984. We also began to see the Muppets in more of Jim Henson's shows, such as Fraggle Rock, which ran from 1984 to 1987, and a cartoon show titled The Muppet Babies, that ran from 1984 to 1991. As the popularity of the Muppets began to grow, so did the pressure on Henson's shoulders. Henson had shown interest in selling the rights to Disney in 1990, but unfortunately that deal never went through due to his death that same year. On though, in 1991, Disney managed to buy the distribution rights for the Muppet franchise. From 1990 to 1998, Disney began to release more new Muppet productions under that distribution right. These included the well-known films such as Muppet Treasure Island and Muppet Christmas Carol, but also some lesser known ones like Muppets at Disney World and an attraction at Disney World called Muppets 3D. For some strange reason that I couldn't quite figure out, in 1998, 
the Muppets start appearing in productions that weren't produced by Disney. These were films such as Muppets from Space, uh, A Very Merry Muppet Christmas, and Kermit Swamp Years. Is it very merry or is it just very merry? Is it merry or very merry? I don't know. The Muppet Christmas one that isn't the Christmas Carol. Let's fast forward to 2004, where Disney have now bought the rights to the Muppets. And I mean all of the rights to the Muppets. This means they have the characters, anything associated with the characters, all the assets of Muppets, and most importantly, they have the term Muppet. So then allows for Disney to do what Disney does best. Make a ton of films. Oh my god, did they make some amazing films with the Muppets. Include The Muppets Wizard of Oz, which was a made-for-TV movie back in 2005. The Muppets, which was the Muppet film that starred Jason Segel, Emily Adams, uh, that sort of thing. That was from 2011. And then quite possibly the greatest film, not the greatest Muppet film, it is, but I mean the best film ever made Muppets Most Wanted from 2014. If you haven't seen Muppets Most Wanted and you've got Disney Plus, please watch Muppets Most Wanted genuinely, and I mean genuinely, one of the greatest films ever made. Not, I'm not saying that to be, oh, I'm doing Muppets character, no, no, no. Genuinely the greatest film ever made. Me and the Nodebrit, along with two of my other friends, have watched that film every time we get drunk. I just think you know them, Jess and Parker, it's been in videos. We have watched that film so many times. If you haven't watched it, please get a free trial to watch it. I don't care. Just watch Muppets Most Wanted, please. It's so good. It's so good it makes me want to cry. Now, the future of the Muppets is something I think about an embarrassingly large amount of my life. But we have had films recently, such as Muppets Haunted Mansion that was released last year, which, you know, a decent Muppet film. We've also had TV shows such as Muppets Now, uh, which ran for a bit back in lockdown, and now Muppet Babies, a new Muppet Babies one. We've also got recently a series of Lego minifigures, which can I just say is like a dream come true for me. If you're a long term viewer of this channel, you know how much I love Lego. I used to do Lego reviews back in the day. Uh, if you haven't seen any of them and you want to, I'll warn you they're quite cringy, but I'll link them up there if you do want to go and watch them. Um, but l l let me just show you like how cool. Oh, Ralph has topped it. Come on. Come on, boy. Look at that. Look how sick is that? It's a, I've destroyed the set and all, oh, it's all going wrong. Like, Lego Muppets is the greatest idea ever and that's amazing. But if someone were to ask me, Fraser, what is the future of the Muppets? In my head, it's got to be parody films. I think, yes, having like a Muppets 3 would be really nice because the characters have still been left in a place where there can be a Muppets 3, but parody films I think is where it's at and I've said within my group of friends me and James have spoken about it quite a lot about what films would we like to see Muppetified and I've got quite a few ideas of how I'd Muppetify films so if that's something you'd like to see please do let me know in the comments uh, any suggestions of films you'd want to be mu Muppetified that's uh, not even a word and why am I making a word that's so difficult to say it's not a word if you want to leave any suggestions for films to be Muppetified and I might do a whole episode of this where I just go through and cast the Muppets into various films. Um, so yeah, if that's something you like to see, do that. But but I, I do think the future of the Muppets is very parody driven. Um, with things like Haunted Mansion, um, Muppet Treasure Island, things like that where it's Muppets doing films would be very good. So there you have it, um, a brief history of the Muppets. I hope you did enjoy this very different style of video. It's something I really enjoyed, the whole process of researching, writing a script, which is a very foreign concept to me. I've never written a script for a video in this much depth, really. Um, along with designing the set, and I, I, it's a process I enjoyed. So if you did enjoy it, please do leave it a like. Um, comment any suggestions for future more history like this. I really do enjoy it. I'm a nerd for things like this. I want to go through, like I said earlier, do the evolution of certain Muppets, because some of them have changed a lot. So again, if you'd like to see that, let me know, like, comment. Also subscribe if you're new or you haven't done so already, because um, we're growing, we're growing, and it's lovely to see. So yeah, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.
Toodle. Time to play the music. It's time to light the lights. It's time to meet the Muppets on the Muppet Show tonight. Dun dun dun. It's time to put on makeup. It's time to dress up right. Why don't you get things started? I drew this. How sick is that?